Hey, it's John Reed, JDOD.com, Sapphire Tech at Madrid live stream. You have no idea what we've overcome to get you this live stream, and I hope it's worth it for you. I got some friggin' rock stars up here. To my left, I got usual suspect, Harold Ryder. How you doing, buddy? Good, I'm good. It's nice to have, not to have to pass the mic this time, huh? Absolutely right. We're good. Yes. Then we got uh, the always opinionated, Graham Robinson. How you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. And community <laughs> legend, Emron All. What up? Uh, good. I pronounce you by your Twitter handle. I hope that's okay. Well, it's, that is my name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A first time so, uh, Subfire ticket. Yeah, you, first right? time on the JDOD set. Yes. Uh, we're glad to have you. Um, so we actually have a little more of a concise format for this broadcast because we have a, another, uh, the analyst view of the uh, <laughs> event is coming up for your viewing pleasure at a quarter past the hour, and we lost a little bit of time setting up, so we'll get right to the point here. Uh, we're just in the sort of two-thirds mark of the show, so uh, let's just do some quick reactions, uh, thoughts so far. Should I start again? Yeah. yeah. Well, um, again, it was a packed day. Thanks God the strike didn't affect too much uh, getting to the to this place. Don't know how it's going to be leaving, but... Um, Started early morning with, with Sanjay's breakfast where I showed up half an hour late. Um, but that's okay, I already heard the, you know, his stuff in previous sessions. Um, but then when we came back here, um, I went to a SAP mentor session about a business suite on HANA. And that's of course, I love those, you know, you know me, I I'm a HANA fanboy, and no doubt. And uh, ERP on HANA is something that you know, I'm really looking for because I have quite a few customers asking me all the time, is it coming? And I can tell them, yes, it's coming. And when, they gave us... When, when, Harold, when? Well, okay, so here's the next thing. He, gave, he told us when, but he said, please, this is under okay. NDA. But I can tell you, it is soon. Yep. So it is soon. It's funny, because I believe I saw it on Twitter. Uh, so, so much Yeah, maybe the, somebody tweeted, but so it was not me. So much for the NDA. But anyway, yeah. the point is there's some specifics beyond the vagaries that we got yeah. from, the, Absolutely. from the keynote. So. He showed us a roadmap about um, the business suite in general, not just for HANA, but in general, how it's going to evolve down 2020. Um, so that was, because you don't normally hear a lot of business suite talk nowadays, right? right. So it was great to hear that also, uh, you know, for the mentors, a, a technical audience. It was a technical discussion. Um, lots of uh, questions, but also comments from the likes of Tobias and Torsten, who are, as a customer, already evaluating ERP on HANA in, you know, within the company, together with CRM. Right. So they gave some good feedback right then and there. OK, I want to dig further into that. But for now, let's pass the baton in a more concise way than Harold. What's your, what's your quick reaction for today? Being good, Mike? Yeah. Is that Christoph? <laughs> yeah. yeah, please. <laughs> I, I was fantasizing about a happy medium uh, somewhere in there. No, I, I mean, uh, a, a packed day. Um, uh, I've, I've done uh, um, early morning meetings. I did actually did a hands-on today uh, with um, rock star uh, Tom Young and uh, Rich Harmon on uh, the XS engine in Dahana which is the first time I got to play with that and, uh, and lots of other meetings, so a very, very busy day. Um, uh, and it's good, and it's, it's, good. It's, it's the first time I've been to a combined Sapphire Tech It, uh, and it's, it's more than a decade since I've been to a European Sapphire, so I forgot how many people wear suits and ties, I forgot how many people in Europe smoke, it's unbelievable how many wow. people outside smoking, that sort of stuff. Did you get to deploy an app into Access? I, I wrote an app. Wow. I wrote a couple in, of apps. The first one was what? called Hello World. Yeah, hello. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Good for you, man. Uh, <laughs> hello, gurus. Uh, hey, hey, uh, All right, that, that's it for me. Yeah. <laughs> hey, by the way, hi, Abesh. I forgot that part. That's, <laughs> that's how I always start our live I hope BJ is watching, too. Yeah, and, and hello, BJ and John Appleby, our, yeah. our comrades who are yeah. not here. Um, uh, for, for the viewing audience, let's just define Access briefly. It's the, essentially the application platform developer uh, runtime platform on, uh, on HANA. So well, it's, it is, it's, it's the it's thing that inside, makes HANA an application. It's inside HANA. So it's you, inside HANA. That's mm, the unique part, part of HANA. You don't have to deploy anything extra. When you have HANA standalone, you have it inside. Absolutely. 
and uh, yeah, it's. I think it's the, the slides and everything that I have talked, you know, seen is it's the you know native applications within HANA. Okay, well, we're, we're going to get back to that too. Tell us about your day. Uh, my day was really I walked around the show floor, um, but the event for me has been about really two things: um, SAP's new focus on user interfaces, and and HANA. And um, I've learned good things about both of them. So I'm pretty excited. Okay, well, we got some juicy topics. I uh, feel like I want to start with something that could ruffle some feathers out there just to make sure you guys are staying awake. And since we don't have any coffee, maybe this will keep us up too. Let's talk UI. Uh, at least, were you in the UI meeting as well, Harold? I was in the UI meeting yesterday, yes. Okay, so you guys were all part of this then. Uh, we, what's up with UI and SAP? I mean, let's face it, I mean, SAP GUI is looking more and more ancient by the day, right? The way UIs are evolving. I think they finally got the message that customers are a little bit annoyed. You know why? Because they see a lot of other competitive products that look so much better, right? So they bring this message to SAP and SAP is listening, thanks God. And they put a really hard task onto somebody's shoulder and he accepted it and I hope Who's the, well, the victim's name is Sam. Yeah, Sam. Yes. And yes, Congratulations, Sam. Sam. Enjoy your job. Good work, yes, Sam. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, so Sam has a big job uh, and a, a big focus for the initial part of that job is uh, is for him to to really um, try and 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 appease those customers. You know, he's he's yeah. he's not initially looking at building a new UI platform for the you know. Roadmap five years time something new comes out like a WebDim Pro app up on steroids and all that sort of stuff. He's looking at solving an issue or at least addressing an issue in a in a very short time frame. And, and you uh, know what in, what is interesting about that? Within the at the at the Hana meeting, you know, for ERP on Hana, the the it seems like that message is really unified within the the, the folks at SAP because he showed us he went onto the drawing board and draw drew the exact same diagram that Sam drew yesterday about what they're going to focus on first, mm -hmm. the evolution of WebDoom Pro, the adoption of WebDoom Pro, and what they're going to focus on and with what tools. Yep. So it seems like they do talk to each other, and that's a good sign. I think what's interesting is they're trying to, as Graham said, right, they're not trying to build something new. Um, their initial focus was really redoing the experience for a certain commonly used transactions uh, to a point where it becomes acceptable, and this is key because they have a they have a, um, a problem about how people perceive SAP's UX, right? And new stuff isn't going to going to impact that too much as much as the old stuff, because for most people, SAP is that daily early morning time log or early morning order processing that I have to do every day, and can that experience change? And that's his focus, which is quite interesting. He's got some big challenges, though. There's no doubt That's about true. that. And and the biggest one, and he's very well aware of it, is the, is the is the adoption lag. You know, he, and he he gives the perfect example, which is you know that SAP have rolled out different UI technologies over the years, and they really haven't gained traction because the the SAP customer base takes five to ten years to to take, take, put some of these on board, and so they've never and before before the use the new UI technology, whatever it is, is, is taken on board and accepted by a vast bulk of the customers, there's a new one. Yeah, we had a heated conversation over lunch where someone pointed out that NetWeaver Business Coin is not even heavily adopted and that's been around for a while. So UI yeah. adoption is, it's not just SAP delivering something cool, right? It, it's it's adoption from the customer. Yes, yeah. And, yeah. and it's a big challenge. I mean, they're very aware of the challenge. Sam's very aware of the challenge and he articulates it very well and, and, he, and he's got some pretty clear ideas about what, you know, if you like the low hanging fruit is and where to attack it. But, you know, there's no doubt that uh, that adoption thing is, you know, if you think of SAP GUI, you know, everyone talks about how terrible SAP uh, UI is, but if you, a lot of them are still running on old grey um, SAP GUI versions that are, you know, many, many years old. Years old. Yeah. So, and I mean, that's what he's trying to fix, yeah. right? He's trying to focus on those key uh, UIs. He's so. throughout, like, uh, there are about 300,000 screens, yeah. so of course they can't fix these things overnight. <laughs> and he gave us some mathematical, like, how long it would take, and, you know, it's a huge task. Yeah. But the adoption rate of the UI is exactly the same issue which they know they will face with ERP on HANA. Because not everybody's gonna jump right away, right? And I, I asked the questions that even, let's say, the functionality is, you know, 
it works, it is a lot faster, the benchmark results, everything is, is there. Customers, you know, have heavily invested in hardware. Do they have to rip the hardware out and replace it? And he says, well, there, will, there are customers where business will demand that they're going to use ERP on HANA. And then for the rest, the adoption will be definitely slower. Yeah. Right. And then we can get into some really dangerous waters around the UI thing and ask the tough question around if SAP were, for example, to offer some products that enhance the UI for core SAP GUI customers, should they make that freely available or should they monetize it? And to what extent should you go back to customers who are unhappy with the UI and say, we have a solution, but it's going to cost you? Yeah, and, and that's one of the things we discussed as well. And I, I think um, uh, in some ways it's a f familiar debate, you know, and, and, uh, um, it, and this, this adoption issue, you know, all, all that putting pricing and licensing um, friction in the way of can, all it can do is make that adoption issue harder. So there, there's some, you know, conflicting priorities there that they need to work through, absolutely. So let's, I let's have, oh, sorry, I have something to say there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wasn't convinced yesterday that Personas, the product that we're already talking about here, <laughs> okay, isn't, here we go. isn't going, I don't, I'm not convinced that it's going to solve the problem. Um, it's, it's a tool for customers to reconfigure how screens look, which is fair, but the real problem here is um, that designers are not involved in the process of UI building at all in most enterprise cases. And if customers customize it, uh, let's say IT teams at customers customize it, I don't think they'll be able to solve the real usability problem. So we, we might have a product that goes and sells or is given out for free, but are we going to solve the UX problem or not? I, I disagree. Yeah, sure. Be, you know why? It's, I hear what you're saying and you know, yes, you know, the UIs are not gonna be a work of art. But with personas, we have, a, we have a tool here that allows you to actually quickly make things better, a lot better. He, he used rightfully this example that many SAP screens are convoluted with data that is actually not necessary to be there in the first place. Persona allows you to just hide those fields because you don't need to see them, rearrange the, uh, the f existing fields in a way that makes sense. Now you would say, well, you're going to need a designer to do that. I say maybe for certain transactions, but for the majority, the, it will just be good enough to do use personas. Well, and you, can put a picture, word, you can put a picture of your dog on your screen. I mean, <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's, a, that's awesome. Important. That's important. That's important. You know? He used the word band-aid, yeah. and I think it might work as a band-aid, but I'm not yeah. convinced it's, it's a big I mean, it's, it's, it's not a silver bullet, no, and yeah. that's, well, not, that's not what he said it was, to be fair. He didn't say it was that's a silver right. bullet. He, I he think did say it, it will help, and he said that, and, and even in the European HANA meeting today, they said, they're gonna use the, the evalu evaluating right now, the 20, 25, 50 top transactions, and they will be completely redone. Not just with personas, but completely, yeah. you know, your order entry is, will be streamlined, right? Using new technology. Right. I so uh, we have basically 10 minutes left for our shoot. What I'd like to do is kind of do a flow on HANA from more business side to more tech side and then we'll do a little preview of what's happening tomorrow. Yep, I got a, a time check from Dennis Howlett there, um, so he's gonna keep I thought he was just track. putting up a finger. Uh, no, Dennis is in don't F with F with me mode, so. And, t and I'm, I'm poking the tiger. Yeah, you're, you're poking the porcupine. You I do. hope I'm not getting it. <laughs> yeah, shouldn't do that. Um, so, so Harold, let me just do a little devil's advocate on ERP on HANA. Uh, if, if SAP's going in and and rewriting pain points and transactions and doing all that. Uh, my two questions would be, uh, first I start thinking that that's more disrupt gonna be more disruptive than just swapping out a database. So I think about SAP's mantra about disruption. Then the other, my other skeptical point would be, if you're gonna go and rewrite that stuff, why not rewrite them as cloud apps? Like, why rewrite an on-premise system at this day and age? Here's, let's hear your rebuttals. Okay, well, I'm not here to defend SAP. No, 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 no. But I, I know give you my point of view. Not from SAP's perspective, but you've been hearing it directly from customers, and that's what I wanted you to respond to. From well, the customers who are telling you they want it, how, how would you Well, customers, first, they are excited. They wanted, they wanted to hear whether it's in the works or not. What's the status? Whether they then want it or not, there has to be an evaluation, like always. But there are definitely customers that have pain points 
with the existing ECC system because of their huge volume, right? Their customers, their, their um, accounting tables are so large that everything takes forever. They have to do logical partitioning, requires massive amount of hardware. Where with the HANA appliance, yes, it will take a larger sized appliance, but overall actually it will be Sorry. less hardware than using the traditional approach. Now, the disruption part, the way it's going to work, and you, we already have that, is if I want to currently uh, move an, an ECC report onto HANA to you know, use a sidecar approach, like for COPA, for example, mm -hmm. I can do that with a custom report as well. I can use a program within uh, SAP to say, these are the transactions that are, you are now switching over. So that's the, le in the no disruption approach is, you, certain stuff still runs against your NEDB, but then you can say for those transactions, I want to go right now into HANA. And then you know, over time, when you build trust mm -hmm. and you trust the system with you know, your most and, and, and data, it's even, it's even then you can say, I'm yeah. going to trust HANA fully. And, and just, just to be more specific, it's even more granular than that. It's, it's, it's certain transactions or programs and certain tables That's inside right. those as That's well. Right. So you pick the table so this that is the notice. Now, you putting can get everything from. into the cloud, right? I mean, certain companies have just, uh, you can't do that. Their data is, you know, tax data, financial data. You can't do that. Those companies, they say, yes, we, we are able to do it. I want to see how the whole latency plays out and how this, because I haven't seen it, right? So I haven't seen it. Technically, sort of from an architecture standpoint, I think, and, and I frankly, I don't know enough about this, but um, I would speculate. Don't that let that stop you. It's it, never stopped it, any it's of us. It's never before. stopped me. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but I would speculate that if they are to some extent rewriting it, architecturally, it would adopt. See, with HANA, SAP's learned to do distribution within. Um, within software, right? They're, they've learned to do distributed parallel architectures, and I'm hoping some of that will flow into how the suit is rewritten. So even though there is no deployment into the cloud, um, they are taking advantage of the concepts, whether it's deployed in-house or on a cloud-based system in the future. Okay, fair enough. Uh, we're getting tight on time. We've got seven minutes. I want to hit next. You, you actually went out onto the show floor. Mm -hmm. um, which is actually not easy to do this day and age, the way our schedules tend to be at these right. shows. And you were in search of real customer feedback on the ground right. around HANA. What, what did you learn? So I talked to a bunch of people um, trying to collect, really, my question was, what's your HANA use case? And I found fairly good examples. Like, for example, I like the one from McLaren. Uh, the, uh, their race cars, they, um, they're tracking real-time telemetry data from each car, um, and they've plotted graphs of how each driver performs in the car. And to compare um, driver performance, and they can then use that information to predict how will we deal with the next race, when will the pit stops be, which, uh, which, curve, which turn is a problem, for example. So I thought that was a pretty neat example. Uh, of something you couldn't do before with all systems, just the volume of information they had to deal with. Um, I also saw a good example from um, a, one of the startups in the Startup Forum uh, program uh, where they're doing fraud detection on, on game and as to game providers. And they're, they're detecting anomalies in behavior of different players in the game, trying to wow. figure out uh, which person's cheating. And I think that was a nice use case as I well. Never, I never cheat, so it's hard for me to relate <laughs> to that. But I, What games are they? I don't know. They didn't, they didn't tell me who their clients are, but they, they, they said that you, know, you can track algorithmically what's a nonmalytical behavior, right? And what's an, where is an anomaly? Then okay, so you've investigated some but use cases. Mm -hmm. No, he hasn't. He's gone to the show floor and he's played with the McLaren racing car and a yeah. games provider. Exactly. That's, that's yeah. how, how's, the, that a, how's this a business <laughs> it trip? It's fun. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How far along are we towards real, like, uh, execution on these things? Is this a hypothetical or is this? Now these people, uh, so uh, they already, the game people already have customers. There was also another pr person in the startup uh, program, something called Basis <coughs> Technologies. Yeah. They yeah. also already have customers. So a bunch of these yeah. people are these guys pretty far ahead. Yeah. 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 Okay, now we're at the five minute check mark. Hal just threw up the five minute sign. Uh, I want to hit on uh, XS just briefly. Uh, 
which we touched on earlier around development environment for HANA, is in your mind, you're, you're, you're one of the best BS detectors in, in our line of work, in my opinion. Is, is this BS, is this a breakthrough? What is your feeling? Um, I, uh, it, it's, a, it's a breakthrough in terms of, um, uh, it's vital for the success of HANA, because the success of HANA is taking those data-centric stuff and pushing it down to the appliance to do the work. So you need that built-in application layer, or you, albeit a very light one, to be able to write HANA specific stuff, the stuff that HANA does very, very well and is very, very HANA proprietary, if you like, you've got to build it inside that application um, uh, stack that's inside HANA, and it's not even a stack, that application layer that's inside HANA, and then you just call it as a service from outside it and things like that. It gives you a ready-made distribution layer. It gives you, think about it, right? It gives you ready-made MapReduce inside HANA, right? You don't have to write, in your application layer, you don't have to write distribution at all, and you can push uh, a distributed calculation down to HANA, get that done, whether or not it uses data, um, and get it back to you. I think that's that's fascinating. I also heard they're 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 supporting different runtime, development runtimes like Node.js and a Will. bunch of others. Will. Will. All right. <laughs> but um, I think that's exciting. So yeah. basically, what you guys are saying is I'm going to have to learn another product name because the stuff's not total BS. Oh, I wouldn't I good. wouldn't learn the name because the name's changed. The name's going to change. Oh well, that helps a lot. <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay. So we have we're on the three minute mark. So uh, looking ahead to tomorrow, obviously it's a little bit of an unusual structure for the day because actually Vishal has got a press Q and A. Uh, before yeah. the actual yeah. keynote, yeah. so we're going to kind of like do things in reverse, right? right? So just looking ahead to the keynote, which is at the end of the day, which is sort of the end of the show, I want to go, you, 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 this will be your, your last comments, so make, make them count. I uh, just want to hear uh, kind of what, what you really think Vishal needs to address in this keynote for this to be a successful conference in your opinion. We'll start with you, Vishal. Um, I'm actually looking for more information um, on mobile. I haven't heard a lot of mobile in this conference, although on the show floor there's pretty a lot of focus, but I'm, I'm interested in where that's headed uh, from a strategy standpoint. Uh, I'm sure it's key, but I'm, I'm looking for more information there. Well, if it's like Orlando, you're going to be disappointed. Uh, oh, no, yeah. Vegas. So yeah. Vegas. <laughs> Thank, uh, thanks for throwing cold water on the, the keynote. For me. That's, that's <laughs> awesome. Right. Do you know you have no hope for a job in marketing? I hope, I, hope I hope your current role works out. Graham, Graham, what do you have to say? Well, yeah, I guess I'm, I'm looking to see some of the UI stuff and things like that, where they've gone from Vegas. Um, I was Vegas was only three weeks ago, three, four weeks ago, and, uh, and talking to some of the guys, it's, it, they've made some strides just in three or four weeks with some of this stuff. So I'm interested to see what they're prepared to show on stage and there's rumours about some of the stuff they'll do. I think they need to, I think Vishal needs to explain what wasn't explained in the, in the keynote from, um, from uh, Jim and, uh, and Bill, which was um, uh, customer 360 is CRM on HANA. That's a big thing, but right. they didn't, they didn't they say didn't that. Really they didn't really exactly. say that. Yeah, that was and I thought weird. that was a bit strange. Yeah. Um, yeah. And because uh, that's a huge achievement. You know, we're yeah. saying, when are we getting ERP? Well, CRM yeah. on HANA is a huge achievement. Okay, that's it for you. Harold, you have 30 seconds. Let's All right, see so I know he's going to talk about HANA. So I hope he's going to talk about HANA with customers on stage. So that's what I would like. Yes, yeah. that's what I would like to see. Uh, customers giving proof of all the benchmarks. Where everything. are these live customers yeah. we've been hearing about? Absolutely. Well, we, uh, yep. You know why? Because we, we talked we to one today. It was a great story. Today, yep. And it was a great use case. And the metrics that they gave were fantastic, fascinating. Yep. So I hope I see that tomorrow. Well, as for me, I'm going to be looking for clarification on the cloud story that I thought was a little bit better in Las Vegas. Uh, and obviously, Ariba now, they can talk about that. So, And that segues very nicely into our next shoot, which we're going to move into shortly. So I want to thank you guys for this concise and opinionated wrap. And I uh, look forward to <laughs> continuing this conversation uh, over some drinks maybe a little bit later tonight. Let's do that. And, uh, and we are doing an event ramp tomorrow around the same time. So if you enjoyed this, stay in. If you didn't, then we'll try to suck less next time. Thanks for joining us. We can't promise that, though. See you, we can't, we can't promise, though. <laughs> All right.